Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Patrick with Stacking Layers. Today's video is going to be all about setting up the CAN bus version of the Hermit Crab. Um, not just setting it up on the printer, but what we're going to do is actually setting up the motherboard to get um, a new bootloader, which is called CAN Boot. Um, gives you a nice little extra feature of not having to um, press these buttons after everything is installed. So you can, instead of having to take everything apart and press these buttons to flash new firmware, you can just do it all via software now. So we're going to get that set up, whole new bootloader, pretty easy, don't worry. Also, we're going to get Clipper installed on here so we can get everything set up and ready to print. A um, couple prerequisites, we'll start with the hardware since you're checking this out here. So the can, uh, the, the Hermit Crab CAN system comes with quite a bit of things actually. comes with the um, Raspberry Pi hat, it's a big tree tech version. This is for the uh, CAN bus uh, distribution from the Raspberry Pi. Um, all your cables that you need, you got both regular C to C and a micro um, to A type USB. You have your tool hub system, power cables, um, and of course the tool changer stuff. But this is, these are the things that you need to hook up for this style. What we're going to be doing is installing it to where we only use the one uh, CAN system as opposed to the alternate version you can use the micro USB which plugs directly into the USB on the um, Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately, you'll have to also have power cables going to here. Um, so it's still less than what the normal hot end would be with all the extra cables. You can essentially only have USB and then two power, or the, yeah, the power cables coming out of here. But with this setup, with the CAN system, you have just this one cable and that's it. So it's nice and clean, easy to install. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Other things you need to have is a Raspberry Pi set up already running Clipper. So I'm assuming that you already know how to do Clipper and that you have that installed in working with your main board in your printer because that is needed. Um, this is basically only for the hot end. So if you didn't know, <laughs> this is for the hot end. It does have a TMC2209 uh, chip in there for running one, one motor, um, but that's all it's going to run. So that's for setting up this thing. All right. So let's jump over to the computer to do some of the software side. Okay, over here at the computer, a couple things we need to get going. First off, I want to point out you need to download and install the STM32Q programmer. This is the program that we're going to use to flash the bootloader, the new bootloader, onto it. Um, pretty straightforward, which you'll see here in a minute, um, but you do have to get this downloaded and installed. To do that, just come to their website uh, right here. This is the link. I will also put it down in the in the uh, description, of course, so you can easily get to that. But there it is if you want to type it in. And then you just do here the Git software. Um, and then for your system, you get the latest. And then normally there's a end user agreement that pops up that you have to agree to, of course. But after that, then you come to this. Um, if, you're, if you don't have a, an account to register or log in, you don't have to register. All you have to do is put in your information here name and email and download. Um, I haven't really got any spam email from this. Actually, the only email I've received so far is the one about the download, so it doesn't seem to be big, a big problem. I didn't click on this box to get updates, so that's probably why. So it's pretty straightforward. It's ST, so it's not like some kind of weird, um, you know, random program, homemade program, so pretty legit. But yeah, if you don't want to download that, then I guess you could do the uh, USB version or don't do CAN boot. Um, there's other ways of doing that. But with this one, we'll need that software. So get it installed and running, and we will move on. So before we get too deep into doing that part, there's a couple things we need to set up with the Raspberry Pi. So first, we need to get into uh, SSH over into our system here. We're going to first set up the uh, CAN hat system so the Raspberry Pi knows how to, t t um, how to talk to that. Let me get my password in here. Can't talk and do a password at the same time. Nope. <laughs> there we go. All right, so the first thing we want to do, let me pull my little cheat sheet up here, um, is this, what we need to do is in the uh, configuration text file, we need to add this line of code. Um, this is basically just to tell the uh, Raspberry Pi that it has the, um, the CAN bus hat installed and what oscillator is installed on it um, and things like that. So it's pretty much just setting that thing up. It's pretty easy. So all we do is the uh, sudo nano and um, into the boot configuration or boot file folder configuration text. I'll just copy that so I don't have to go with all the typing. So let's get in there, password. 
And here we go. So I've already done it, so I'm just going to scroll down here so you can see where it is. Um, I don't know if it's specific that you have to have it within this little group here, but I feel just for um, organization, I put it here instead of putting it all the way at the bottom. Um, sometimes I found other things, if you put them all the way at the bottom, it sometimes doesn't work properly, so that's why I have it here. But this, this is the line that we're adding. And I will, again, I will have all this uh, stuff, pretty much I'm gonna put all of this into the uh, description so you can easily get to that and copy over. Um, but it's important to have that the um, the 12 kilohertz um, and the uh, the one kilohertz, I think it is, so that the this one here, um, there's a lot of uh, other setups where it has a two there, and I think, so yeah, some other ones from Clipper. If you go through with the, um, let's see, on the CAN bus system here, does it talk about that? Mm, no, but it has some other things. So it talks about the adapter and stuff like that. But anyways, there's other things that shows different numbers. It also shows a different number here, which I'll go over in a minute. So the numbers I'm showing you seem to work the best so far. But anyways, so that's what we're putting in. I also uncommented or you know activated these three guys here. Um, I think the SPI is necessary with the can hat. Um, but the other ones I just added because in case I want to do pins later, I don't have to come back into here. This is for uh, I square C and S and the SPI functions. Um, can't say it's 100% done, but I uncommented those, this all four here, and it's working well. So <laughs> go ahead and do that, and then exit. It's going to probably ask you if you're if you just added that. It's going to ask you if you want to save. Of course, hit yes and move on. The next thing we're going to do is set up the um, the Clipper uh, system. That is to basically uh, uh, for it to interface with Can. So we'll do and do this nano and get into the interfaces folder file. Copy that on. And all you're doing is adding this code here. And then like I said, on the Clipper website, they have the 128. Um, but for this system, and they're also a 50,000 bit rate, we're using on ours, we're using a 25, uh, 250K bit rate and uh, 1042 on the uh, transmission queue. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. So get that in there, just like the way it is. And again, exit, save if prompted, which it should if it's new. And that should be it for that part. And that basically gets us getting close to ready to uh, do some programming. But first, before we actually, whoops, not go into Spotify, before we do the programming, we need to make a bin file, which is going to be uh, set up for the can boot system. So that's what we're going to do next. So to get to can boot, we're going to first download the repository. Um, you know what? One thing before we do that, I want to do this, uh, point out this part first. Um, if you don't have the latest clipper, I recommend installing it. That way when we do go further here, you're installing the newest of the system. So get your system up to date, and I recommend the easiest way is to do it with this um, Clipper install and uh, uh, update helper, the QA, or however you would say that. Um, and to do that, you would first uh, clone it over. So we're gonna clone this repository. I don't think it's gonna let me do it because I'm already on it. I already have it, I should say. Uh, I should probably copy. Get that in there. Yeah, so it already exists, but it, if you don't have this already, you'll see it populate. If you do, then you know what's going on here. You don't need to follow along with this part. You can skip ahead. But for anybody new, this is the script here to run it. So copy that out. Paste it in. And it'll start up the, uh, the update system. So it looks like there is an update actually going on here. So that's probably good we did this. So yes. So it's going to do some updates. And let's see, now we got to restart it. Hit it again. There it is. So here is the Clipper installation and update helper. Um, really awesome tool, actually, because you can, uh, if you want to switch over between mainsail and fluid, you can easily do that with this by uninstalling and installing. And even if you want to do Octoprint or whatever you want to do, uh, Clipper screen is nice for touch screens. Um, so it's a really nice all-in-one tool to get you set up and going and also let you for updates. And so that's what we're going to use it for today is the update. So you just put in the number two, which is here for update. Number two, enter, 
and it'll do a check and see what you have on your system to see if anything is new. It looks like we have some new Clipper already. Gets updated pretty quickly. <laughs> Everything else is good. Um, yeah, there's a new one there. I'll, I'll just do it so you can see what it looks like. Um, so to update everything, obviously there's not much that needs to be updated, but you can just hit this A, and that'll do do an update all that's available. So a Clipper's gonna update, do you wanna do it? Yes, let it do its thing. So now I'm getting the latest of the Clipper that's available. Um, so it's, it's always good to have the newest one. Since you're flashing a board, we're gonna be flashing Clipper firmware onto this. So it's smart to just have the newest of the new on there. You're gonna also probably wanna get that over to your uh, main board too, so. Make sure again, everything's all up to date. And it's gonna do one more check. Make sure everything is installed and updated, systems up to date, and we're good. So all good there. Let's hit B for back, and then Q to get out of there. Now we can download the repository for CanBoot and get that part done. So again, go to my handy little cheat sheet here, and the CanBoot is this GitHub uh, repository. So we'll copy that, clone it over, and again, I already have it, so it's not going to show it install, but it will if you if you it's your first time, it'll show you the the download and all that stuff and let you know that it's done. Once it's done, you're going to want to uh, change directory to the can boot directory, and it does um, set the name. If you want to see, let's just ls that. Uh, you see, it's right here. Here's the can boot. So you want to make sure when you're typing it in to do the actual capitals on these. Um, I've ran into a couple of issues where I've, things weren't working and it turned out literally is because I put a small c and a small b on there, for instance. So yeah, capitalization is important on these things. I don't know if that's unique to, to Pi or in, gen, in general with SSH, but yeah. Just do the caps when, they, when it's there. So we'll CD and then with uh, this, you can just, if it's highlighted, just right click and it'll pop it down there. So get into cam boot. And then um, what we're going to do is the uh, the make config. So we're going to make the menu config, just like in Clipper. So we do make, uh, get that, yeah. So make menu config. And if I spelled everything right and done it, there we go. Now we're into the can boot configuration. So it looks just like the stuff with Clipper, right? But it, this is for can boot. So it's kind of the same procedure with Clipper. You need to set your your uh, uh, microcontroller. Uh, so it's the SM, SMT32 system. These are the two that are available with can boot. So you can put it on some of the older boards if you wanted to. Then we go into the, which model is it? Um, for the Hermit Crab system, they use the, uh, the F072. So it's that one there. Okay, so make sure that one's selected. Clock reference of eight megahertz. All this should be normal uh, or populated automatically. Um, the thing that you want to change is the CAN bus. We're doing CAN bus, so you don't want to have it on USB here. You want it on the CAN bus, and we're using this uh, system, the PB8, PB9 pins. That's where they are for this setup. Okay, let's get that one set. Leave the offset at uh, eight uh, kilobytes. And make sure that your CAN bus speed is at 250000. Okay, so that's what we're using throughout the whole system here. Um, yeah, everything else should be good. Um, so go ahead and quit. And then once we got that, we want to make, just again, just like Clipper, we're going to make that bin. So M A K E and go. And of course, because I have already done that, it's, it's not gonna do it because it's done. And, uh, but if this is your first time doing that, you're gonna get it a full, you know, it'll it'll go through and show you that it's working and when it's done and completed. And to make sure that it is, you can, ls, let's see, we can go into the out folder, which is here. So cd to out, and then check in there, and you can see this is all the stuff that's uh, populated when you do your make. And we're going to be needing the bin on there, the can boot dot bin. So you can use however you want. If you're already familiar with how to extract these from the Raspberry Pi, um, we're going to need to get this file onto our computer so we can use uh, this program to boot it over. Sorry, to flash it over. So 
I'm going to just use the easy thing that I know of, um, and that's just using the uh, the command prompt on Windows. Um, so what I've gone and done is uh, here. Let's just go to this folder. So I've I've made. Oops, that's not the one I want to go to. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I put it in Clipper folder, I think. Yeah. So I just made a, a can boot uh, file um, file folder, and then uh, yeah, so <laughs> got my little notes and things. That, that I'm basically just gonna be using that and put it in there. So um, I can just get it from here. Okay. So make make a folder so you can put it in, and then you come up to the top here if you don't know this trick, and just do uh, cmd and enter, and that'll open up a command prompt to that folder. So. In order to get that over with this, it's a pretty simple thing. It's a, um, a command of the uh, PSCP, uh, I believe it is. Uh, honestly, I forget what that means right now, but it's a, it's like the copy over from from another sy system. You're gonna be copying files, and we're gonna use the capital C for copy. And then what we need to do is first put in our um, our address to the to the Raspberry Pi to get into that. So that's pi at um, you can use the domain name that you set up, the um, you know pi, the Raspberry Pi dot local or whatever it is that you set up the name. But if you want, for me, I like just using the um, uh, the IP address for it. It's one nine two dot one six eight dot. Let's see, mine is eighty six twenty seven, I believe. And you put the colon, and now we go to the folder on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and it, if you follow along the way I'm doing it here, it's going to be on home. First, you forward slash. That's gonna be home. Forward slash pi. That's where Clipper and everybody lives. And we're gonna do cam boot. And of course, capital C, capital B, because it will freak out or not know what that folder that you're looking for is if you don't do that. Um, and then it's in the out folder in there. And then we're looking for can boot. Dot bin. B I N. There we got that, and then we want to. And then you can name it. So I'm just going to name it. Uh, I'll just name it Can Boot again. Um, I'll just do yeah. Can Boot. You can name it whatever you want because we're using the uh, programmer to flash it over. Just make sure it is a dot bin Can Boot dot bin. If everything went right, it should download it to the thing. And of course, we have to put our password. There it is. So pretty pretty simple. If everything went right, you'll get this kind of a message and let you know that it was downloaded 100%. And if we go back to our folder, there it is. So like I said, you can name it whatever you want. So if you want to make it, you know, hermit crab, boot up, whatever. Um, so yeah, once we got that, then what we have to do is get it into our programmer. But first, we need to get connected. So let's go back over to the hardware so you can see how we're going to power this up and get it connected. All right, so here we are. First thing we want to do is put the USB-C onto the side, and that's the one that is plugged into your uh, CAN hub. And right now we're going to be using it just for power. So we're just going to be powering the system up and, and providing power that way. It's not going to be doing any communication. To communicate to the computer, we're going to need to use our uh, micro USB here. Get that plugged in also. And the other side to the computer. Now we power up our system. This is, we're powering this part. All right, so it's powered up. And then to connect, this is the part why I say using the CAN boot is gonna be nice because once we get this bootloader installed, we'll no longer have to do this. But what we have to do to boot over to get into our bootloader is hold down the boot button, that's the bottom one, and then tap the reset. And there, let's see, it's hard with one hand. There we go, tap, and you'll hear the USB engage on your computer, and you can let go of everything once it's done that. So let's go back over to the computer and see if everything went well. Okay, so here we are with the programmer opened. We want to come over to this right-hand side where it says USB right now, but if it doesn't say USB, you want to make sure it does. So that's what we're using. Then you want to come down here and see if you're connected to anything. So you hit the refresh, and there it is. It's found a USB 1, and it has a 
this FFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
and that it, that number there is something we're going to need. So keep note of that. Um, but that is showing you that your CAN system is um, attached and communicating. So this is this is my specific one. So don't copy this number because that's not going to work with your system. You need to copy the number that pops up on here. If nothing pops up on here, you just get a checking for CAN nodes and nothing's happening. Um, then something went wrong and you're going to need to go back and make sure that your uh, can hat is properly done with those these first things that I showed you here. Uh, make sure that's all in there and saved properly. So communicate. So if everything went well, you're here. And now, since we do know that it is communicating, um, now we are able to um, to flash over Clipper. So what we're going to do is get out of the can boot. So just CD back to the main thing. And um, we're going to do uh, into Clipper which let's see, I think I have it on here. Uh, yeah, I think I should be able to just do it straight from here. So we're gonna do the, our make uh, menu config. I might have to go into the clipper folder. Actually, yeah, let's get into the clipper folder first. Now we wanted to do our make menu config. And that should boot up here. So now we're back here. So again, like I said, if you've done Clipper already, which you should have, this is going to be super familiar with for you. And it's all really mu pretty much the same settings that we're going to be using that we did with the uh, the CAN boot um, firmware or bootloader. So SMT32, and we want to have it on the F072 chip. Make sure to leave the offset on this one because it's needed for that um, bootloader. 8 megahertz crystal on there. And again, we're doing the CAN bus system, not the USB. So that is the one with the PB8, PB9 uh, pins. And if it's not, because I think it's defaulted as uh, the 500,000 uh, speed, you want to do on the 250,000. Make sure to, to set that up like that. And then that's it. Then we quit out of here and we make. Again, since I already have this, it probably, yeah, it's not going to do it. Since I've already made it, don't need to make anything new. Um, and that's that's it for that. And then what we will do is install it onto the uh, Hermit Crab. So to do that, we go back to can boot. We're going to use that Python uh, script again. Can boot and CD scripts. And uh, just to make it quicker, we're going to do the, actually, I can hit the up arrows because we've already done this, Python, but without the queue. Um, this time, what we're going to do is use the U for to upload or update. And then we want to get our UUID of the Hermit Crab board. So highlight, right click on there if you're using PuTTY, it'll automatically pop it down there. So once you have this full command in there, it should do its thing, which is going to basically push those boot buttons via software and upload Clipper. So there we go. So you see it hit the jumper command and now it's installing Clipper onto the board. Simple as that. Um, so I mean, from here on out, everything else, since you should be familiar with Clipper, is straightforward in basically just doing all the all the Clipper setup. Um, there are a couple things which I'm going to point out here that uh, I recommend to do. Um, I don't think it's very necessary, honestly, but it is something I think is, is definitely worth doing. Um, and that is to, let's see. Yeah, we're good with this, so we don't really need this anymore. But... Um, you want to get into your, your fluid or your main cell, go into your uh, configuration files, and we need to make a Hermit Crab CAN bus uh, a configuration. And this is basically going to be, it's the same thing as printer configuration that you're familiar with, but setting up the CAN, um, the, the Hermit Crab board. Um, and I, I recommend to do it that way because it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's a little more clean. Let's get this while I'm in here. <laughs> this is the temperature. Set up if you want to get your temperature uh, sensor working on there. I hadn't uh, set it up properly, so I 
And so we don't need that. Uh, we do need this, we do need this. Yeah, if you wanna get your, your temperature set up, that's what you're gonna need to use. Just a little side note. Uh, temperature center, uh, you can name it whatever you want. Um, and then uh, you wanna use that, and the, the MCU is Hermit Crab. So anyways, yeah. But you wanna get this set up. Um, up at the top here, your uh, MCU Hermit Crab, and that's gonna be the Canvas uh, UUID. And that's that number that we used for flashing. Remember, it's uh, go back up here. Where did you go? Remember when we first checked it out? That number. So you got to put that. Same thing as when you set up your your motherboard. You got to put in that um, your your MCU uh, serial number. Um, except for that, we're not using a serial because we're not on a um, USB port. We're using the CAN bus. This is the CAN bus ID. Okay. So you got to get that in there. Um, to get all this information here, to get all the pins and everything, if you go to uh, Big Tree Tech's uh, Hermit Crab section under the CAN bus clipper, they have the folder. So all I did is open up this and then, um, let me save that, go out. And I just started a new one, named it that same thing that they had, and then uh, opened up the new file and copy pasted it over, and then did my own configurations within all that. So. It has everything that you need to go. Um, you can turn on and off things like you see down here. It's got the filament uh, runout sensor or motion speed sensor for uh, like the smart filament detection. Um, you need neopixels. There's two little neopixels down on the very bottom of the hermit crab, so you can change those and do what, what you want with those things, and so on. So you got your heater. What kind of heater fan you got plugged in? Or yeah, the heating fan and heater and the whole nine yards. So everything is that's on that board because like I said, it is its own little motherboard is going to be in here. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out with the extruder, um, I do have the nozzle diameter here, and you know I set it up pretty much normally as you would with a normal extruder on the printer config. But I found for some reason I don't know why, but if I have it only on here for the nozzle diameter, I get wild uh, over extrusion. Uh, I don't know what it's doing. The only way it works correctly is if I leave the extruder. Uh, defined here and have it also defined as nozzle, nozzle diameter here. So maybe one of you guys know why that is. Maybe it's just a glitch with the way I have things set up somewhere else. But if I uncomment this and leave the extruder only on the hermit crab side, it just over extrudes like like wild. It was it was pretty <laughs> pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, the, if you're having a weird kind of problem like that, just set it up like this. Um, everything else I don't need because it's on the hermit crab file. Oh, and you want to make sure the very top here to include that file. Um, this is in the printer configuration. So you want to include the Hermit Crab uh, printer configuration, basically, the pins configuration. So, yeah, quick rundown. Printer configuration, you want to include the Hermit Crab um, configuration, whatever you named it, dot config, dot, dot .cfg. Um, if you're having over-extrusion problems for some weird reason, have your extruder nozzle diameter here. Otherwise, everything else in the... Uh, you know your printer setup is is pretty much straightforward um since the extruder is on the hermit crab you don't need your extruder defined on here other than that um so even the um when you get into your steppers uh stepper drivers the extruders are are uncommented because like i said it's on the other one um yeah so that's pretty much all there is to it now um so we can save yeah, I guess we don't need to restart because I don't have my main board set up to that anyways. But make sure you got that and everything else should be working good. And that's, uh, see, I don't think I've missed anything. Uh, I think I've made this relatively short considering what we go through. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them down below. Um, if you have any you know, hiccups or whatever, you can't get past a certain stage, definitely feel free to uh, shoot me a message. I can try to help you out as best as I can. Um, I'm still learning Clipper on that, so I just want to throw out, that out there, but um, I, I'm a little bit cuckoo and <laughs> addicted to this, so I'm learning as fast and as much as possible. Um, I, I literally just sit down and, and read through all this stuff, so I'm nowhere close to a pro whatsoever. I have my own questions, but since I've gone through problems and figured out how to fix things, I feel I can help where I can, so don't hesitate to send me questions. I'll help you find the answers if I don't know it, okay? Um, always good to hear from you guys. Also, um, if you have any suggestions for new videos, anything you want to see, um, you know, any, any type of things, I'm working on getting more tools for this system. Right now, I only have the H2 extruder to play around with. Um, I'm working on trying to get a, a laser engraver and maybe a CNC, a little mini router thing. 
So we'll, we'll see. That's in the future. Got to save up to uh, get that type of stuff. But yeah, so any other questions, put them down there. Any any gripes that you don't want, like about my videos or things you would like to see different or things you do like, I always like to hear all the input, so it's all welcome. And um, yeah, again, check out the, descri the description if you haven't already for all of the links and uh, quick copy-paste stuff. I'm going to put all this in there so you have that. And yeah, I think I need to cut this video off now. I'm going to start rambling if I don't. So until next time, thank you for watching and happy printing.